His Dark Materials, Venom, PG-13, and Henry Cavill, Cavill as Superman or not. Who the heck knows at this point? I don't know. This time, I'm Miscast Entertainment. It was good. We're going to need a bigger boat. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Here's Johnny. I love the smell when I come in the morning. Get to the chopper. Shut up to my ear friend. I'm going to make it an offer again. This is my You're going to need a bigger boat. I noticed the last episode I was doing this a lot. Like I had Tourette's. <laughs> Not Tourette's. Like or itchy, song. itchy butthole. I promise that uh, that's just my leg. <laughs> I can't control it. It's got a mind of its own. Okay, Welcome Baxley. back, guys, to Miscast Entertainment News, where we talk about everything that's new to you but old to the industry. We just comment on it, and hopefully it's cool. This is your host, JJ. Hey, what's up? He's cool. I'm kind of cool. Kind of. Yeah. I think he's really I, I th- cool. I think I'm cool. But <laughs> what do I know? I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on cool. <laughs> you tell us. Comment below. Is Listen. JJ cool? You're fucking cool. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Who's cool this now. guy, you wonder? This is Jack. And Jack is standing in for Greg. And I promise you, Greg is not under the table. Hopefully. We what, don't know. What's that tickling that I'm feeling then? <laughs> <laughs> if you see brushy. me laughing a lot, then you know you know what's going on under the table. I so, feel scaly white fingers. <laughs> flex. <laughs> flex of fingernails. Flex. Stop it. And I'm William Davis Moore. And if you are new to the show, then head on over to our channel and check out some of our old content where you can get all caught up. Then if you like our content, hit the subscribe button and then ring the bell next to it so you can get notified of all future content. All right, guys. Let's get into the news. Let's do it. Yeah? You ready? You ready, Jack? Ready Ready for some news? Let's do it, baby. So what's news on the news? Oh, oh wait, you're me? not Greg. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh fuck. Shit. What, what are we gonna do now? On, what? I guess I gotta. I guess I gotta do my homework. Oh, Damn oh, it! Oh crap! I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Turn this mic off. <laughs> Damn you! All right. Uh, so first, uh, I'm very excited about this story. Actually, um, I'm a huge Philip Pullman fan. Um, yes, I have been uh, reading. Have you read his newest stuff? Because no, actually, I found out. I just recently found out that he has a new trilogy out. The first book is apparently out already, and uh, I ordered it on Amazon, so I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to start reading. All right, I have not gotten into it yet, so I won't I won't spoil it for you. You started reading it? I already read it. The whole thing? Yeah. When do you uh, have time for that? I uh, I don't listen to music anymore. I oh. I only do uh, audio books, whether they're oh, fiction or not. So you don't read; you do the audio book yeah. thing. Yeah, I, well, yeah, multitasking. Because, yeah, because I don't have time, dude. Okay, who who narrates it? Uh, th- well, that's the great thing. All right. Well, let me let me get into the story. And we can get okay, into that. sure. Um, all right. So HBO has started co-producing, uh, with um, Bad Wolf. You got you you guys know what that reference is from? Bad Wolf. Mm-hmm, yeah. What's it from? I was just bullshitting. I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just going to say it. I know Do- Bad Robot. I don't know Bad Wolf. Doctor Who. I am the Bad Wolf. I create myself. Exterminate! Oh, okay. And it's being, it's, you know, it's a company from Cardiff, uh, England. Uh, they're starting, they just got greenlit for the second season and HBO got on board and now they got all the international distribution rights. So we are going to get a, uh, BBC Bad Wolf production, HBO crossover kind of production of the, his dark materials, which is what you guys know as the golden compass, which is a movie everybody kind of crapped on. It was a piece of garbage and fans of the I mean I, I read the initial the, uh, the first trilogy and when I saw the Golden Compass I was like Jesus Christ they screwed this up big time. The first three quarters of that movie w- was pretty dang close to the book. This After that that last part the third act of the, of the film that's where I think they went to shite. But I think they were pretty close. I mean as, an, as a movie ap- adaptation to a book yeah, but keep in mind with these with the, with these adaptations, it's very difficult because you have to do two things. You have to appease the fans of the initial material, right. but at the same time, you have to make it accessible enough so that the average moviegoer can actually get into this stuff. You have yes. to stay true to the uh, source material. Yeah, like so. If you look yeah. at a movie like uh, The Godfather, okay, classic American movie. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
It was a book before that. Right. right. Mario Puzo. Which no one really gave a shit about. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I read the book. It yeah, was a after great book. The Godfather, you, you were obviously You didn't, you, were, you didn't read the book before. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on a second. First of Mario all, Puzo first of all like. the book came out in like 1970, and the movie's like 1972. So, yeah, I read the book after the movie. Right. Yeah. Because you read the book because of the movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, but we're we're talking about like the opposite. Yeah, where people are already fans. Yeah, where people are already fans. So it's it's tough to do. So you need to honestly you need to make a great movie. Yeah. And uh, that that's a very tough thing to do. Uh Godfather is one of the very few examples that I can actually think about that actually did it like really really Lord well. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Lord of the Rings is great too. Yeah. That's actually Harry Potter series was pretty good yeah. too. Well, they had well Harry Potter had the writer actually helping with the script. So yeah. that was kind of cheating. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard. Yeah, but when it came to the Golden Compass, nobody loved the movie. People who hadn't read the books hated the movie, and people who read the books hated the movie. Well, there was also, I mean, that's because the studio was scared of the Catholic Church boycotting, and the Christian churches boycotting the film because it is, that whole series is a a slight on Uh, Yeah, absolutely. A slut. (laughs) <laughs> Whoa, slut. Greg never said slut <laughs> Greg doesn't do that Greg stuff. doesn't say slut, no, Jack man. Let's not compare people here, okay? <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> What's but, going but, on? <laughs> <laughs> this is not Gregness This is this is, this is anti-Greg My God uh, Anti-Greg what, are, what have we signed up for? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, we're going to get more of this every week <laughs> <laughs> Just sluts every five minutes yeah, uh, the the movie did two things wrong. It feared the boycott, um, and then when it released, they didn't care that that they toned it down for them. Right, you know, they boycotted it anyway and destroyed the uh, USA box office, which killed any chance of a trilogy. Well, well, look, you know, there, there was a lot of people that were against the Harry Potter films. I mean, actually, like people. There are certain religious, re, you know, religions that are very opposed to wizardry. They think it's um, the gateway to Satanism. You know, like uh, I have no problem with is. Satanism. You know, ha- hail Satan all day long. But uh, there are people who have a problem with that. And it never hurt Harry Harry Potter because those were great movies. Mm. Every movie was like, like hit the mark. No, no, I'm I'm not, no, no, I, no, no, no. I'm I, with him. I think every single movie was done perfectly. No, no, no. I, I wasn't mm, Harry Potter. I was mm, on the, the, the comparison because Harry Potter was all right. There's a passage in the Bible about some some witchcraft crap that gets these guys all up in arms. But not every Christian is up in arms. Uh, Philip Pullman's books with the his dark materials are literally a direct assault on their entire institution, which gets everybody up in arms. So whether you know that or not, when you read it, you're going to get halfway through. You're going to get through the first book. And as soon as you start A Subtle Knife, you're going to be like, uh, is this guy like going after my religion? Like, Because that's kind of where it goes. I, I, think, HBO, I think your mm was warranted in that one. That respect. Yeah. yeah. HBO is not going to give a shit because they're renowned for taking controversial yes, material yes. and accelerating it into the public. And they produce amazing content. And they uh, are, Let's face yeah, it. Yeah. Everything they touch is, is pretty damn good. Even their yeah. crappiest shows. Yeah. I, there are shows on HBO that I don't watch. It's not because of the quality of the show. It's just because I'm just not interested in the storyline. Exactly. Oh, you exactly. don't have the time. Yeah, because their quality is always But there, every, everything right? is it's spot on. So I'm, I'm super excited for this series. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, it's got the, the girl um, Daphne Keene as Lyra. She was in uh, Logan. She played... Oh, yes. Weapon, weapon okay. whatever the hell. I think that's a good Logan. fit. My favorite movie. Not okay. And... Uh, <laughs> James McAvoy is Lord Asriel. Right. So they're bringing this over. This is a BBC show under the umbrella of for USA as HBO. Right. So let's not let's not like tell people it is an HBO show when it's kind of like a hybrid, I guess, at this point. Oh, okay. All right. So moving on, we're going to throw it to Venom. Venom. Yeah. You have a lot to say about Venom. <sighs> Venom. Okay, so Venom is rated PG-13. 
Okay, Literal. which to me is like the sh- the shit. It's just garbage. P- when when a movie's rated PG thirteen, it's just absolute garbage. That's like where you dump all the crap. When you take an R character and put them in PG thirteen, correct? It's crap because yeah. not every PG thirteen movie is bad. But not every th- like PG thirteen saying, movie is bad. You're right, yeah. but PG thirteen movies are designed to gain a mass audience. That's the mass right. audience uh, yeah. rating, and to give a uh, a movie like Venom, which is supposed to be like uh, this very brutal, kind of scary character, a PG-13 reading is is a huge like cop out. I think, yeah. especially in the world that that we live in now, where you have movies like Logan and movies like Deadpool, which automatically get an R rating right off the bat, and um, and I, and I think that's that's the way to go. And these yeah. movies have been very successful, getting an R rating. Would the producers and the studios rather those two movies be PG-13? Absolutely, because that, that's more money for them. Luckily, we have people like Ryan Reynolds. Daddy needs to express some rage. And, you know, uh, the, the producers for um, Deadpool, which really, like, push the limits of what they can get away with as an R rating, and it makes the movie that much better. Sure. So apparently the reason why they decided to make this movie PG-13, and and this is a quote here, the reason is so that Venom and Spider-Man can face off at some point down the line. If the movie is rated R, it's hard to do that, which I think is a bunch of fucking bullshit. you they they can face off if they want to face off that that that's a totally separate decision. But I think it's a complete cop out on Sony's part to make the movie PG-13. Thoughts? Listen, they made uh, Logan R-rated, like you said. Deadpool was R-rated, and both movies worked. They brought in the money. Fans liked it. They got good reviews. So this fear of making uh, R-rated movies should really disappear because it's there's a track record there. It's been proven that it works. And if the fear, like you said, is that you're going to have an R-rated character in Venom and a PG-13 character in Spider-Man face off in a movie, well... That shouldn't matter because we already saw an R-rated Logan movie and they can put him again in a PG-13 movie and it'll work. People will still see it. That's a great point. And, you know? and the other point is Logan mm. got Oscar noms. To me, isn't this an indicator that the movie is just going to be garbage? Because yeah. a movie, <laughs> movies like Logan yeah. and movies like Deadpool, they're great, they're great movies. Yeah. So, so they can afford to be an R rating they're grounded. because yeah. people are still going to go see it. Right. Kids are still going to go see this movie. Hell yeah. I did. You, know? you did. We all went and snuck into the movies we weren't allowed to get into. That, that's what made childhood freaking amazing. Right. Watching movies was getting into those R-rated movies, and those R-rated movies were the best movies. Yeah, like taking what clearly is an R-rated character and saying, "Oh well, you know, it wasn't R-rated in the comics." Yeah. Well, that's that's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Sony's already got a track record with Venom as PG-13. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they oh, did it yeah. already. Yeah. And look how that turned out. Fuck Do we you, Topher Grace. <laughs> That's <laughs> another <laughs> thing you fucked yeah. up, Topher Grace. See? I know. Let's, yeah. I mean, we can blame him if we want, but... <laughs> no, I blame... Who else is there to blame? <laughs> no, I blame Sony, Sony specifically for casting him and fucking railroading Sam Raimi into that position because he didn't want to do that, and he almost quit because of that. And they're going to do it again. That's exactly they they don't learn Sony. No, Sony doesn't get it. No, like, Sony, listen to the fans. R rated. That's what you want, right there. They should look at the comment section of that announcement because I yeah. did, and I I always scroll down, you know, and, and a good long way to see like where it starts. Well, what to device change. are you using to scroll? Like, what is this? What are you doing there? <laughs> well, it's definitely it's not the sticking. French Tickler two thousand. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> what? What kind of device? Or, what is this thing? You're, what do you use? Ah. Oh, snap. Oh, let me try it. Yeah. Oh. Look at that, man. Scroll up. Scroll Come on. Down. When you're on the shitter, you ain't going to use two <laughs> hands. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm all up for R rated movies. I think even a Batman movie, R rated movie, would be great. Yeah. They should just not be afraid to do it. But for money, that's 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 the main reason. The studios, um, there's only one studio that has gotten it right, and I hate, I hate to say it, but it's Disney. And they're eating up Hollywood because of that, because they understand the fans. Yeah, they get it. You know, the other guys that have the 
properties that rightfully should be Disney's at this point don't get it. <laughs> Every property is Disney's. Well, or will be the, soon. Yeah, will be soon because <laughs> the ones that still have properties are struggling to keep them. And they're right. And if they had any sense in their brains, they would be like, "All right, well, Fox did Radar, and they're cool, and Disney bought them, and Disney's gonna let them be Radar." Yeah. Now, if Disney says, "I'm gonna let them be Radar," Disney. Family friendly Disney that fired James Gunn over tweets that happened ten years ago <laughs> yeah. can say that they can still be rated R. Then Sony should be like, uh, no brainer. Make Venom this evil ass character that yeah. has fangs more than head. Yeah, rated R, man. Yeah, like that's all I gotta say about that. All right, uh, we gotta talk about it because because uh, we dropped it, guys. We actually dropped something, and it was. By accident, but it's because we actually, I think, know what we're talking about sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Just sometimes. Uh, we pegged uh, Superman uh, and Henry Cavill's departure from yeah. it. Yeah. Even though uh, that's actually not the case. We're seeing right now the first public contract dispute in history. I think with social media and everything the way it is, I think Warner Brothers is like, tired of being behind the game with like how social media is treating their characters and i'm pretty sure they're probably getting pissed off about the whole you know dc run situations that they're they've been putting themselves in yeah uh so they tried to railroad henry into a contract where he does an appearance in shazam for free Mm. and his manager said look he's got to get paid and henry was like this is bullshit i need to get paid and yeah. they're like no you should do it because you should be proud to be superman he's mm. like fuck that and then warner brothers was like all right we're at seven o'clock in the morning in easter time we're going to release oh, a statement that says basically uh henry's out as superman and his manager's gonna be asleep for three hours before she can respond and hopefully the audience then response to us saying oh we all hate henry anyway because they were trying to ride the coattails of the dc uh eu is shit right you know but the fans are like no we like henry as superman and we hate how you have handled it yes yes so she came back saying no the cape's still in the closet in the tweet then henry released this really weird tweet at night where he's just standing there with this crazy music Wearing a Krypton lifting shirt, which I appreciate it because as a gym nut, I like to lift. Dude, I want one of those Krypton <laughs> lifting shirts. That was awesome. So I'm going to be looking for that on Amazon. What, what do they look like? Can you can you put a, a picture up uh, now? Right there. In between me and me and Jack. Oh, no, I'll put it over there. Oh, there it is. Damn. It. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, right. And now it's gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Where'd it go? <laughs> I took it away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then he held up this toy. And uh, no words or anything. So what was the toy? It was a Superman toy. Oh, okay. That was it. And then uh, that was it. Well, so, wow. I'm glad that the fans came to Henry Cavill's defense because, like you said, he has been a really good Superman. Uh, he fits the part. Uh, he's done everything that he was told to do, and it's just the writers at you know DC Warner they just don't get it right. They try to compete with Marvel and they can't. Uh, maybe the movies are a little too dark, but it's really not his fault. I think he should remain Superman for the next installments, and I think that he will. Oh, I don't yeah. want to see any more. Inst- I want Henry Cavill to be Superman forever because I, I, I love him. I think he's great. I think right. he's a great Superman. But, man, they just handled those movies so poorly that at this point, God, just g- give it to somebody else to, to do it. It's just... It's, they're so bad. Yeah, Everything that they tainted. do is just so bad. But Wonder Woman wasn't so bad. No. Wonder Woman was pretty bad. It was the it was the kind of like the the best of the bad. But if you oh, look at yeah. it, it's extreme. <laughs> it's it's very cringy. Uh, yeah. Do you think part of it has to do with the fact that Ben Affleck is not returning as Batman? Maybe no, they want no, to I recast think the movies. The movies just they look so fake. They're so poorly directed that uh, Gal Gadot is a great, I think she's a great um, actress, yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah. You know, a lot of people had concerns that she was like too thin, you know, to be like a warrior. But I, I think Dude, she, she nailed it. it. On, man. She you know, it I, th- I think she's awesome. And I think Henry's awesome. And to be honest with you, I think Ben Affleck is like, 
could be a good Batman, but just that the way that the movies are directed and the just 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 the style of the style of the action it it looks like a video game it doesn't look like a real movie they took a much darker mm. tone um and again when you compare it to the marvel movies they just don't stack up they don't stand up to each other like when you look at a marvel movie you get the sense that these things happen in our, in our world when you're looking when you're looking at the, the dc like cinematic universe it's like it, it looks like it's happening inside of, of a computer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I'm here. Henry Cavill, you're Superman. Stand your ground. Do you guys like this beer? Oh, shit. I love me some of this Biscayne Bay. Do you? Nah. Have you really. tried it? Uh, it's not. It, it tastes like a regular beer, like a, like a Budweiser or something. Um. Miami Pale Ale, baby. I'm. I gotta say, I've actually been to Biscayne Bay uh, Brewing many times. They're over in uh, Doral. Uh, they have a nice selection of beers there. Great food, also really nice brewery. I am not a fan of this particular beer, though. This is uh, Miami's Pale Ale. They have other ones that are like amazing, but this one in particular is not my cup of tea. Do you? Are you enjoying it? I, I am enjoying it. Uh, it's five point five percent. Uh, see, see, to me, it's got a really good taste. I'm not a really big fan of IPAs, but this one actually tastes pretty good. Compared to what we've been drinking, it's on the lower end of the scale. I mean, it doesn't have anything that stands out to me that makes me think, oh, this is like great. But it's a local brew. Um, I'm sure they have other flavors. I mean, I would rather drink a uh, local brew that I don't like as opposed to, you know, like Coors or some other bullshit, oh. you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, because they at least put some heart into it. <laughs> yeah, these guys, these, no, these, uh, look, I'm not crapping on Biscayne Bay. I mean, they, they are a very good brewery, but this particular beer, I don't like it. It t- tastes like dirty water to me. Wait, let me let me take another sip. Yeah. Let me taste it again. Yeah, I, I, can, I actually literally can uh, see the flavor in my it's, mind. It's light, but then bitter towards the end, which it doesn't really like appeal to my taste. I like it needs a little more hop. Yes. I mean, it feels like a, like a, like a, like an IPA, right. the, it would be hoppy in the front and right. then sort of bitter in the end. And right. I think that's a better balance. <laughs> that's better. That Ooh! was definitely our news episode. The ending call. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> if you like our episodes and our content, please like our content by hitting the like button. And if you really do like it, then, you know, be a subscriber and hit that and then hit the bell next to it to get notified of future content. Peace. Bye-bye. Can we get a wah-wah-wah from you? Wah-wah-wah. No, like a wah-wah-wah. What was that? Wah-wah-wah. No, like a like a wah 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 I think you're doing wah, much better. Two wahs and a wah. Like, wah wah wah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs>